For the second consecutive day, the Blue Jays get a very good start from their starting pitcher, and their offense comes through as they win 9-2 over the Kansas City Royals there last night. I just want to say I just want to apologize to you guys for not uh, uploading it last night. Uh, it was really late last night uh, when I got home, driving a lot last night, so it. Uh, I was so exhausted and didn't want to wake up people in the house. So I I thought I was going to do it there this morning for you guys. Just for the fact that the Blue Jays play this afternoon at 1 o'clock. All right, let's talk about this 9-2 win over the Kansas City Royals and winning this series, may I add. And the Bo, Vladdy, Cavan trio is 2-0 as a Blue Jay. Now, ideally, that's, you know, going to change at some point, but it's so good to see. And you know what? Trading a guy like Stroman and trading a guy like Eric Sogard and now trading a guy like David Phelps, I'll do a little video on him after this one. Seeing this team continue to win and continue to play well, it shows right there not only how good this team can be and how good they will be, it shows them, you know, that, that they're a strong squad. You know, and watching watching Sean Reed Foley go out there today and pick up his pick up the victory in the ball game. He's one and one on the year. Went five shutout innings. Give him give him four hits, four runs. Or sorry, holy smokes, five shutout innings. Give him four hits, four walks, and struck out four guys. Now the only thing I don't like from that start is the four walks, but. He didn't allow a run to score, he got some strikeouts, and he went five shutout innings, allowing the Blue Jays to build their lead up. Top of the first, Sean Reed Foley gets put in a good situation early on in the ballgame, where the Blue Jays get their hitting shoes on, and it starts with Bo Bichette at the top of the lineup, who rips in our, uh, our leadoff single to center field to start the ball game. Great job there by Bo Bichette, but then Freddie Galvis hits the ground out, um... Uh, to, to the pitcher, but uh, Bichette having great speed. There's no double play at second. They got to take the out at first. Now there's a runner at scoring position with only one out. Speed kills. And you saw that with Bo Bichette there. And, uh, Ren, and then Lourdes Gurriel Jr. comes up and he singles to center field. Bichette comes in. His first at bat at leadoff gets a single and scores his first big league run. Great to see for Bo. And great to see him continue to grow here. This is awesome. Then Randall Gritch gets an infield single to second to second base. Gurriel up to second base. And we got two runners on here with, o- with, um, with only one out now. For uh, for you know for Vladdy, and then Guriel Jr. tries to steal and gets thrown out by the catcher. Okay, well that's not what you want to see. But then Vladdy comes up and singles to center field. Randall Gritchick comes around to score, and the Blue Jays got a two nothing lead. And we're like, all right, we're in the driving seat now. Now you want to see Sean Reed Foley go to work. You got the lead early. You don't always get it, but to see the Jays get on the board right away, it's awesome to see. And you know what? With the 2-0 lead, Sean Reed Foley just dominates. He does an amazing job mixing his pitches, throwing strikes early in the ball game, and there was there was times later on where he kind of lost it a little bit, but early on I thought he was real good, you know? And then we go to the top of the fifth inning, and then Freddie Galvis singles to center field. Two runs come in. It's like a broken bat blooper, but it falls in. Both runs come in to score Drury and Danny Jansen. Blue Jays double their lead. It's now 4-0. And now Sean Reed Foley goes up for the bottom half of the fifth and is like, well, that two-run lead, I got four. Let's just do the same thing. He goes a fifth strong inning. That's the end of his night. In line for the victory. Gone five shutout innings. Amazing job by Sean Reed Foley there yesterday. And then you go to the top of the eighth inning and then off Joe Biagini, uh, Villoria. I think it's an RBI double scoring Lopez. And what an amazing catch from Randall Gritchick. I mean, you know what? We're going to talk about Vladdy's bomb that he hit in the ninth. We're going to talk about all kinds of things. And Sean Reed Foley's great start. And Teoscar Hernandez, great sliding catch there in center field into the gap in left center. And you can also talk about, you know, Randall Gritchick's unbelievable layout catch to end the bottom of the eighth inning. That ball gets down. He misses that diving play. At least two runs are going to come in to score. And it could it could be a triple, depending who's running. It could be an inside the park flipping home run. And then you're tied. But instead, he makes the catch ends the inning, and it brings up the top of the ninth where the Blue Jays' bats are like, all right, all right, we, we've scored four, but we want more. And that's really what happened in the top of the ninth. Let's go to this. St- Stelman, I think his name is, uh, was on the mound yesterday and did an all right job. 
Not so much today. Gets Brandon Jury to fly out, then Danny Jansen walks, then Boba Shet pops out. So yeah, you got Boba Guy at first with two out. You know, nothing's usually going to happen when it comes to that. Freddie Galvis then singles to right field. Jansen up the third. Great job there. And then Lourdes Gurriel Jr. gets hit by a pitch in the elbow, and that was scary. But he seemed to be okay, and that's all we really care about. Now the bases are loaded for Randall Gritchick. And it was an error by Arteaga, the shortstop. It was a hard hit ball, though. And it's, it's a hard error on him. But nonetheless, all runners move up. Bases are still loaded. And one run comes in. It's a 5-1 Jays lead at this point. Great things. Brings up Vladimir Guerrero Jr. And I will say it again. The kid is 20 years old. And they're trying to bust him inside with pitches. We've kind of learned that. I think, obviously, he's learned that. But when you throw a breaking ball over the inner half of the plate, middle inner half of the plate, Vladimir Guerrero Jr. is going to absolutely plaster that baseball. Did you see the home run derby? And Vladdy puts a charge into that pitch and absolutely crushes it down the left field line. And it's deep and it's a grand slam for Vladimir Guerrero Jr. And if I'm not mistaken, he's the youngest pitcher in MLB history to have two grand slams in a single season in his rookie season. What an amazing job by Vladdy. His 11th home run of the year. What a day for him. He has five RBIs on the, J, on, on the day. And that 4-1 lead that that, you know, catch by Randall Gritchick could have been a 4-3 game or depending who's running a tied ball game. You have that 4-1 lead. Then the Jays go to the top of the night. They score five. Imagine how much different that game would have been. But we've talked about it over and over, guys. How? And by the way, uh, Chester Cuthbert hits an RBI double and then bottom of the ninth to make it 9-2 and that's the ball game. But... We talk about it in most videos. How do you win a baseball game? That's just a plain old simple answer. You pitch good. I don't know what I just said. Pitch good. You get good defense. And you get timely hitting. I brought up some... I tried to hone in on some certain points in this ball game. Obviously the Gritchett catch. And I'm, I tried to hone in on a runner at first. Two out. And no runs have scored in the ninth inning. And you turn that into a five spot. This team was not satisfied with a 4-1 lead. So they're like, we're going to tack on five more and make this comfortable. Timely hitting, all with two out. You got amazing pitching from Sean Reed Foley and Wilmer Font. You know, B. Eugenie and Daniel Hudson give him a couple runs, but you were already up big at the time, so it didn't really matter. You know, and and then you got your you definitely got your timely hits. So, I loved what we saw from the Blue Jays today, and your defense was great, and your offense was great, you know. Yeah, the Jays committed two errors in the ball game, but you made the catches count when you needed them to, and that's huge. And I loved what we saw from the Blue Jays there today. Let's go through the stats here real quick. We already talked about Sean Reed Foley, and Wilmer Fall went two innings, gave up three hits, no runs, didn't walk about her and got a strikeout, so it's good to see him go a couple scoreless innings there for the Blue Jays. We're talking about Joe Biagini giving up an, uh, hit, an inning, and he, he, he gave up two hits, one run, walked about her. That was, that was it for Big Joe. And Daniel Hudson went an inning, gave up a couple a couple hits, a run. Obviously, they are by a double from Chesler Cuthbert. And that was it for the pitching staff. But for the offense, oh boy, great things the plate. Bo Bichette had two hits in the ball game. Great to see Bo right at the top of the lineup getting the job done. Went two for four with a run scored and a walk. So people love looking at batting averages this early on in his career, especially when he's doing well. He's hitting 375 with an on-base of 444. Ideally, it's only two games against the Kansas City Royals, but great to see Bo Bichette swinging the bat well right out of the game. You know, uh, Freddie Galvez went two for five and scored, two, uh, scored a run, had a couple RBIs in the game. He's hitting 267 on the year. Trade deadlines today, people. I don't know what the heck's going to happen. Lourdes Gurriel Jr. won for one for three with an RBI and a run scored and a walk in the ball game. Uh, Randall Gritchick won for five with a couple runs scored. Great to see there. And Vladimir Guerrero Jr. went two for five at five RBIs at the home run and a run scored. He's hitting 261 on the year. He's got 11 home runs. He's got uh, 43 RBIs. Vladdy is raking lately, and it's so nice to see. Bijo went 0 for 4, but he walked once in the ball game. Tasker Hernandez went 1 
one for five. And uh, and Danny Jansen, one for three with two runs scored and a walk. So it's good to see him have back-to-back -back games with a hit after that long stretch where he just he couldn't find himself. But it's good to see for Danny Jansen getting back into the swing of things. Let's go down quickly to the minor leagues. Before we wrap this thing up, because we had to get this thing uploaded before the game today. Just about an hour before first pitch. All right, so uh, down in Buffalo, they uh, they lost 10-8 to Syracuse. But offensively, some positives to take from the ball game today. Rowdy Telez. You know, we've talked about guys getting sent down and being brought back up and the revitalized. I think Rowdy Telez might be one of those guys. He's two. He, we had two for two yesterday, had an RBI, scored two, one, two runs, and walked three times. He's hitting 320 down there in AAA. He's dominating, and I like it. I like what we're seeing down there from from uh, Rowdy Telez on the mound. Andrew Sopko was not good. Five innings, seven hits, six runs, five were earned, walked three, struck out two. You already have 6.41 for Andrew Sopko, so not very good uh, down there in AAA in yesterday's ball game. Quickly down to the New Hampshire Fisher Cats, and oh boy, Nate Pearson was on the mound, people. Last time out, Nate Pearson went five and two thirds of hitless ball. Uh, he wasn't as good in this game. I'm not. I, the reason I slow that down is because he went six innings of two hit ball, didn't allow a run, walked three, and struck out five. ERA of 2.54 for Nate Pearson there at Double A. If he continues at this pace, he is starting the year next season in Triple A, and we're going to be seeing him very early on in the season. All right, so for Nate Pearson, he's just dominating there at Double A. Great job for him offensively. Forrest Wall went one for four. Uh, Espinal one for four. Kevin Smith, I don't know what the heck's happened with this guy. July is over today, but he continues to rake. He went two for three with an RBI, a walk, and a run scored in yesterday's game. The guy's hitting 218. Not too long ago, he was hitting 180. Now, I don't know what the heck's happened with him, but I'm loving what we're seeing from Kevin Smith. One of the Jays' top prospects who is really struggling at double A, has found himself and really swinging the bat well. I'm loving what we're seeing from Kevin Smith down there in in uh, in double A. Go quickly go down to the uh, Dunedin Blue Jays and... Um, and offensively, Cal Stevenson, after having a great little stretch there, went 0 for 5 with an RBI there uh, yesterday, hitting 298 on the year. Still not going to complain about that at all. Uh, Kirk went 0 for, 5, 0 for 4, so a rough game down there for those guys. But Nick Podkul, a, a Jays draftee of last year, again, the Jays draft of last season looks pretty damn good. Other than Jordan Groshans not being able to develop because of the injury right now, when he was healthy, he was raking the ball. Uh, seeing Griffin Conine doing what he's been doing, it's great to see. And Nick Podkul, again, a guy that was in the, I think he was in the top 10 draft, same with Cal Stevenson. He went two for three yesterday with an RBI, a walk, and a run scored. The guy's hitting 271. He's doing pretty good down there in Dunedin. So it's good to see these young guys continuing to develop for the Blue Jays. It, it is really, really nice to see. All right. So quickly down to the Lansing Lug Nuts here. And on Tuesday, um, where are we here? There we are. Otto Lopez went one for five with a run scored. He's hitting 299 on the year. And Gabriel Moreno, this kid is something else. He went two for four with two RBIs, a walk, and a run scored. He's hitting 312 on the year. The guy is 19 as a catcher down there in uh, in Lansing. And it is awesome to see him continue to develop. Griffin Conine got the day off there yesterday. And this guy Watson, I think it's Troy Watson, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, he went six shutout innings. Uh, it, uh, six six shutout innings of two hit ball. You know, didn't strike out a batter and had four walks. So that's something I'm a little iffy about. But an ERA 3.72, so it's good to see down there for him. Down in Vancouver, they lost 5-1 in the ball game. And uh, I, think, I don't think there was any really positives out of that game. There really wasn't, so we're not even going to touch on that. And um, and Jamon Taylor, I think, went 0 for 2 with a walk in the in his game again in the Gulf Coast League. I'm not really going to get to them because I think Kendall Williams didn't pitch and uh, Desan Brown. That is Jamon Taylor. I think Desan Brown didn't have a great game, so they're not really going to dwell on that. And down in Bluefield, Geraldo was hitless. Jimenez was hitless. So not very good down there, but. We've seen a lot of positives in the mid-minor leagues for the Blue Jays. They have a lot of great players coming up, and it's really exciting, all right? The trade deadline, like I said earlier, very briefly, is upon us. Today is the day, and there might be a few videos. Is, is a guy like Daniel Hudson going to be moved? Even though J Ken Giles had a quarter zone shot, will he be moved? Will, will Joe Biagini be moved? Will Aaron Sanchez finally be moved? Because we heard yesterday there's an interest in, in him as a reliever. I don't know what the heck's going to happen. Today is the deadline. What is going to happen? It's going to be crazy. The big fish are gone for the Blue Jays, but are there going to be any minor trades for the Blue Jays bringing in some other assets for this team? A guy like Daniel Hudson is, is my pick to be moved. 
I kind of hope he does because the Hall might not be big as Marcus Stroman as two two good looking young starters. But it might be something useful, kind of like a Sung Wan O deal last year. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens with Daniel Hudson uh, at, today at the deadline. All right, so you know what, guys? That is going to do it for this one. You guys enjoyed the video, and you guys enjoyed yesterday's ball game. Smack that like button. Do appreciate that. Hit that subscribe button if you guys have not already. Comment down below your thoughts on yesterday's game, your thoughts on today's trade deadline possibilities. Now, your thoughts on Bo Bichette's short time as a Blue Jay, your thoughts on any of the minor leaguers that I've talked about there today. I want to hear your guys' thoughts on everything Blue Jays, all right? And um, check out my main man, Mo Buckets, on Twitter. Blue Jays Wave on Instagram. If you've not checked him out, he already posted the Vladimir Guerrero Jr. Grand Slam. If you've not seen that, go check it out on Blue Jays Wave, guys. All right, so Twitter is down below for myself. Follow up, send me a DM, do all that great stuff. And I will talk to you guys today. T today. There we go. I don't know what just happened there. As uh, the Blue Jays look for the series sweep of the Kansas City Royals. Jacob Wag is back on the mound for the Blue Jays. Jacob Junis on the mound for the Kansas City Royals. 115 first pitch at Kauffman Stadium. All right. So thank you guys so much for listening and watching. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Talk to you guys then.